Hey, what's up everyone? It's Daxler, and this is part 5 of the Neopets The Darkest Fairy Any% Percent tutorial. Uh, this video will be covering the entirety of speedrunning through Act 2. Now, uh, if you haven't watched the other videos, please go do so. I don't know how you got here, um, but please go watch the other videos. <laughs> Alright, so as soon as we skip this cutscene, hold run up and to the right just a tad, and you'll start running during the cutscene, okay? Run over the save point, and you'll continue running a bit during the cutscene. Now, normally during Act 2, you're supposed to go gather ingredients for a wand after Saradar basically reminds you that you left a training wand. So we're going to hold forward to go into the hedge maze here, and there's one component of the wand right here. So then immediately turn around and back out of the maze, and then we're going to take a right. So now what we're going to do is take this right stair, transfer over to the left stair, and we're not going to go uh, hit the cutscene right away. We're going to go take care of some other wand-related stuff. Now, coming up here is a painter that we have to talk to to get a vial. What you can do is jump and talk to him, and that'll give you a little extra momentum during the chit-chat, okay? So now, go down the stairs, immediately fork or right between the two trees, and that just lets you get to this tree, branch a, uh, tree trunk a little faster. Up here is a tree branch for a wand. And then this is another uh, sort of tight roping, if you will, section. So make sure you jump to maintain maximum speed. And then hold L2 to fall off of that quickly. And now we're going to be going back the way we came. Alright, now... Oh, I forgot to restart the timer. Oh, well. Alright. So now, key thing to note is, uh, make sure you don't jump into this cutscene. Uh, I've been told by Cole that if sometimes if you jump into it, it can softlock. Um, so be careful. Uh, so get ready to mash square. I personally mash square with my left thumb to remove some strain on my right thumb that's normally used for, um... Other stuff. So you don't actually have to save the cat for the old lady, so don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you just completely skip this. It's completely optional. Alright, now you can start holding forward and up to the right a bit, and you'll start moving during the load. Now, you automatically start with a bit of money right here. So something to keep in mind is that you get two speed potions for free here. But you also have 150 left over. So what that means is if you have 400 moolah with Tor, Roberta's remaining 150 will be left over and add to 500, which can give you a extra Mirka Speed Potion if you do your math correctly. So keep that in mind. All right, we're going to move over to the left. Uh, take a sharp left to the bridge. There will be a light moat hidden over here to the right. Make sure you grab it. So again, jump and do it. And then go fill up your vial. So you get that, you can jump over the bridge all cool and stuff, and then enter the library. Now something I would recommend doing here is on your way to, uh, to your teacher here, navigate to this spot in your moat quick select. Uh, you're going to be getting a fire moat and you have to equip it. So get that there right away to, make, uh, to set up for it later. Alright, so mash through two sets of uh, dialogue boxes. Then just one shot. Now for the charge shot, you only have to start charging it a little bit, and it still counts. Then you do rapid fire reverse. And now you um, do three hit combos to kill the book. He can be a little bit obnoxious. There he goes. And then just mash square through here. And then this immediately loads into an FMV, so get ready to mash start uh, an X. And then turn the camera around. And now you're going to want to pop your first Mirka Speed Potion here. Generally speaking, if you know you're going to hit like a auto jump bump, make sure you're holding down L2. Because uh, Mirka Speed Potion speed bonuses don't come into effect if you're mid-air. Unless you're holding L2. But that's an edge case. Alright. So go up the stairs. Stay towards the middle for a bit. And then you can start hugging uh, the wall, because um, then an invisible wall basically saves you. And then I'm just tapping left on the right stick to just make my way up there. 
Now make sure in this hallway to go to the right, the attendant will stop you and direct you to your room if you don't. I don't know why they made the trigger so small. Go to the left. Go through this door. And then you're going to go to the left. Uh, I meant to the left. Now before you go to sleep, grab this moat. Very important. Don't forget it, okay? Then you can sleep. And if, you, if you're smart and not dumb like me, you can actually start moving during that. It takes a little bit of practice to do that, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. Okay. Ow. So now we're going to head out back out the way we came. Try not to die. We're going to head towards the middle room. If you run out of Mirka Speed Potion, that's fine. Go through this door to the right. So you go through the middle room, go down the middle path, and take a right. And then, uh, a lot of this part of the act is just plain as per casual, okay? And then mash jump, because the cutscene trigger is below you. Above you, sorry. FMV. And then, uh, make sure you jump off of here, because you can, you can, again, keep moving during the text box. And make sure that you hold on to this Mirka Speed Potion, because we're not going to be using it quite yet. So now might be a good time to equip, um, Rajuppies over whatever you're currently equipped with. Head all the way down the hallway after taking a left, and this should take you to the clock tower. Get ready to mash square, but not too fast, because you don't want to re-go through the door. Hold, R hold L2 right there, and then you can just jump off of this and land down here. Now, for pushable objects in this game, if you alternate between up... Up and up left or up right, you'll you'll cancel the pushing animation and start another push. And that just allows you to push these things faster. Rather simple. No, don't land on the noil. Okay, he's good. He's safe. <laughs> All right, so doing that, uh, this is kind of just going through this part sort of as is intended. Uh, we don't have, like, super major sequence breaks on, on or any super ma- Like, a lot of this is movement optimization here. So here you're just going to jump off the railing and through the gear. And then do the same strat where you're alternating between diagonals and cardinals. And then you can jump there to preserve a tiny bit of momentum, but that's kind of advanced. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to um, do the alternation thing. Go a little bit to the right, and then hold down and to the right. And if you hold this angle correctly, you should go up the stairs during that cutscene. So let's see if we did it right. Okay, good. So now, at the bottom and top of each of these uh, flights of stairs, hold down L2 because there's auto hop points at them. It's a little bit tricky to get used to, but it can save time over the course of the run. So now would be a opportune time to drop your last uh, potion of Mirica Speed. Don't worry, as soon as we get Tor, our inventories will combine. Okay, as soon as you exit here, you're just gonna go straight across the other way. And make sure you go to the left side of this hallway. If you're too far to the middle or right, you won't activate the cutscene here. Mash X or start through here. Immediately turn around, go to the right, left, and then through this door. We have to hit this cutscene or else things won't trigger properly. So then, as soon as you see yourself hit the, uh, the, the trigger, you can just hit straight down on the, on the stick. And you'll move a little bit during the cutscene. Okay, so now continue back the way you came. Make sure you go towards the right side. Okay, head off to the right, all the way down this set of stairs, all the way up this set of stairs, and take an immediate right into this room. Now, from here you go left, right, right, through the door, left, and then you just keep going all the way down here. This is one of those things that you feel like you shouldn't practice, but you really should, just because it's very easy to get lost here. All right, now pay attention to how I do this. I hold L2 and I get a free little shortcut. Now, the way this puzzle works is you're normally supposed to follow the way the hands go. But if you saw me walk past there, you saw Roberta's tendril things flick up. 
So what you do is as soon as you see those tendrils flick up, turn around, you'll see them flick again, turn around, and go down the stairs one full set, and then do the same thing again. So flick, flick, go down the stairs. And now we'll save some rotations of doing that puzzle. If you're having trouble with that stair at, just do the puzzle as normal. It's not a huge time save. All right, once you're here, go to the right behind these bookcases, and we're already coming to the end of Act 2 here. So Act 2 ends as soon as you hit this door, so that's when I tend to split. Just like that. Okay, and that is going to be the end of this part of the tutorial. So now we're done with Acts 1 and 2. So now we're going to be doing some fun stuff in Act 3, okay? So, if you have again, if you have any questions about movement stuff, uh, there wasn't anything like super duper crazy going on in this segment. I totally understand. Um, but if you have any, if you have any further questions, feel free to again leave a YouTube comment. Uh, Twitter and Discord are the best ways to find me. Um, and yeah, uh, next uh, video will be covering um, skipping the majority of Act Three by getting back into Meridel early. Um, so we'll be going over that split by itself in the next video. All right, see you folks in the next video. Uh, take care now.